Hey guys, Auspicious Shelsey here, and welcome to episode 10 of the Atlanta United series. Now, today's episode, not going to be any games played. This is purely going to be focused on the Super Draft, which of course is one of the ways in which players are brought into the MLS. Uh, due to the fact that we won the MLS Cup, we will actually have the last pick, the 24th pick, in the draft. However, we also have another pick. We do have the sixth overall pick from Orlando City. So we've got an early pick and then we've also got the latest possible pick as well. Uh, but before we get into that, let's go into the academy. We got a, a new, well, essentially a golden generation from our head of youth development. Although I would say only, you know, two, maybe three players are of any real quality. Uh, the first of which, and probably the best overall, was this guy, Nathan Miranda, 16-year-old goalkeeper. I mean, he looks okay. He's got three-star potential. And I mean, in, in a way, he's got his stats in the right places. 14 handling, 10 kicking, 11 reflexes. They're all going to benefit him. And, of course, being at such a young age, there's a possibility that he could develop pretty nicely. We haven't signed any academy players. Uh, they're all remaining in the academy for now. Uh, this guy was also, you know, rated pretty highly, although he's a left winger with a right foot, you know, preferred right foot. So he doesn't really fit into our plans or our tactic could also play a striker, but again, not really going to be too good in that position either. Uh, a lot of the other players are a two-star potential, one-and-a-half star. Carl uh, Pearson is two-and-a-half. Uh, he's a left-back. Really good pace, good tackling, good marking. But apart from that, doesn't look too outstanding. Uh, the next player is Craig Byrne. You know, similar, really good, you know, positioning, good strength, really good marking, average heading and average tackling. But there's a possibility that he could become something decent in the future. He's also left-footed, which is a pretty important fact for a left centre-back. You know, you always prefer your left centre-backs to be left-footed. Uh, and the final player, who I'm pretty happy with and I was thinking about giving a contract to, is Ryan Hernandez. Now, he's a right back, and he looks pretty good. He looks like he could graduate from our academy, and I think he'll probably be the first player that does so uh, going forward into next season. As you can see, really good pace on him, 12 pace, 13 acceleration, 14 agility, and then he's got really solid defensive stats. Um, and of course, we play with the inverted wing back, so... You need the first touch, and of course, you need a decent crossing ability as well. I mean, he's 13 tackling. He's also got 12 technique, which is good for a, a you know, a wing back. I put in inverted commas. 20, ba uh, 20 bravery, and then of course, 13 determination, all going to aid into his uh, development and the possibility of him graduating sooner rather than later. So they're the academy players. Honestly, no one else really stands out apart from those four players that I really mentioned there and that I do actually have shortlisted. Um, but yeah, let's get into the draft. Of course, this is probably going to be somewhat of a long episode, especially without an actual game being played in it. But, you know, hopefully you'll stick with me. Um, I have a lot of players that I've scouted and that have been shortlisted. And uh, yeah, the first pick was for FC Cincinnati, of course. We're going to have to go over some things with the expansion draft. We did lose a player to Cincinnati. And uh, I mean, while it's not a horrible loss, it is going to affect... Well, it's probably going to affect the draft because we need to sort of find a replacement. Um, but overall, it, it definitely affects our depth. And we'll leave it at that because next, you know, next episode is going to be the preseason review along with the transfers and stuff like that. So 
yeah, we won't spoil that. But yeah, first pick was Walter Soul, a player I was actually looking at. Um, and I'm pretty disappointed that he's actually gone because he's pretty solid. He could be a decent backup. Very good physicals and mentals uh, for Walter. So that sucks, but let's continue. See who the next pick goes to. San Jose pick up Dan Rodriguez, another player. Obviously, there's a certain amount of players that every team is going to be interested in. Um, and Dan Rodriguez was definitely one of those. Uh, by far the best goalkeeper in the draft for this season. Uh, the next pick goes to Aaron Bessler. And he'll be joining... Who was it? It was Colorado. Again, the other really good center back that everybody was sort of looking at. Um, I kind of rated him a little bit better because he's got really good first touch um, and he can also play right back. I was actually leaning towards him for my second pick. So that kind of sucks. But anyway, again, we move on. My first pick hasn't been drafted yet. So we're only, what, two or one more pick after this one. But yeah, Minnesota pick up Matthew Watts. Uh, he was the second highest rated goalkeeper, I would say. He doesn't look great, but, you know, not a bad pick, I guess. And we're going to get my first pick. We are going to get him. I'll have to find him. I can't exactly remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, but he is a left winger. And uh, I think he was, in my opinion, I think he was the best. Except for maybe Walter Soule. I think he was the best player in the whole draft, so... Yeah, San Jose pick up Joe Schmetzer, another goalkeeper. Goalkeepers seem to be going fairly highly uh, in this first round. Anyway, it's now our pick, so... <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of players, um, but I'm pretty... Is that That's not him, is it? That is him. Is that him? I'm pretty sure that's him. Gustavo Ariaga. Is that him, Ariaga? Could do it by position, couldn't I? Um, let's go down to left wingers. Uh, a little bit further down. Or was it Salinas? No, it wasn't Salinas. Um, and it wasn't Bocanegra either. Because he's a he's an interesting player. Can play all three cent like center mid positions, like left wing, right wing, and then center mid. Um, I'm guessing was it Leon? I think it was Leon that I was looking at. I'm actually not too sure who to go with now. Uh, so Leon is a generation added ass player which basically means he'll get a big contract. However, that contract won't count towards our overall salary cap, which is a pretty interesting thing, especially considering our team is so... We're over the budget. Uh, so essentially, we have to buy it down with our general allocation money. And I'm just... I don't know who's better. Gustavo... Ariaga. I mean, he's not a natural left winger. But I was looking at him very closely as well. And I feel like he'll be drafted fairly soon. But I think I have to go with Eduardo Leon. Does he have Mexican nationality? He does not. I think we're going to go with him. He's slightly better. Um, we could also actually retrain him as a left back. He's got pretty solid... Uh, defensive stats there as well. So I think we'll go with him. Generation added as player. Like I said, uh, he won't count towards our salary cap, which is important. And there we go. Just like that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to skip to our next pick, which is, of course, 17th. I forgot that I actually picked up another draft pick uh, towards the end of the season. We sold a player... Uh, due to the fact that, obviously, he wasn't playing for us. Um, you guys can... You might know who it is. He was brought in last season. Again, I don't want to give away his name, but it might be fairly obvious to a lot of you. 
Um, but yeah, we picked up a first round draft pick in all, in in turn for the player and a little bit of allocation fund that we gave away, um, which is okay because, like I said, uh, we've actually signed a right winger to replace the right winger that left. So yeah. Anyway, uh, let's skip to our next pick. Um, as you can see, Cincinnati get three picks in a row and then Minnesota get two. So after this first round, which ends about here, or I guess it would end there with Cincinnati, after this next round, it's going to be very interesting because these teams are going to probably take different players from different positions, I would say, to sort of fill out their teams a little bit more. Of course, Minnesota, um, along with us, you know, one of the two newer teams. And then, of course, Cincinnati, in terms of the game, um, they're just coming into the competition um, similar to real life, I would assume. But yeah, all right, let's get into our next pick. And well, looking at this, there are some players that I did want to get. Um, there are also some players that haven't actually been drafted yet. Now, Steve Hume, we need a right back. That is pretty certain at this point. Um, however, there aren't a lot of good right backs going at the moment. Um, of course, I haven't gone through every player. This guy is a really good left back, and he's he is Brazilian. Um, I don't think he has nationality yet. As you can see, only needs 15 days to gain that. And he is pretty good. Also, captain material, good determination of 17, 18 leadership, 13, teamwork there as well. But we are pretty stacked in the left back position. Of course, we've got Bello, Breck Shea. Uh, we've also got the other guy. What's his name? Rodriguez. Is it Rodriguez or oh, Hernandez? Or am I just completely missing the mark? Yeah, Hernandez. I don't know. Rodriguez is the other left back that played. Uh, well, he, who does he play for now? One of the Milan clubs. Um, anyway, off topic. I think we're going to take a miss on Pinner at the moment. Here are more pressing positions. Casey Stair, we need a defensive midfielder. Doesn't really look like a player that's going to fit the... The system, of course, we do play with a deep-lying playmaker. Lacking a little bit of vision there, if I'm being honest. Don't really need a right winger. Of course, we've got really good uh, players at our club. Salinas is a player I was looking at just before. Uh, as well as Bocanegra. Let's go down. Let's look at some strikers. I want to sort of have a look. And see if any of the strikers that I do have shortlisted, if they have actually been drafted yet. Uh, interesting, Kevin Nichols. He's a pretty good player. Uh, as you can see, a couple of strikers here. We've got this guy, Florian Klassen. I think that's Kloss. Yeah, Klassen. Um, He's okay. Uh, he's a deep line forward, which is the reason why I actually have him shortlisted. He's pretty good, if I'm being honest. But would he go... Next, before our 24th pick. I don't think he would. Um, we'll obviously pick him, but there might be better options out there at the moment. Although these guys don't look great. Uh, again, Danny Scott not really looking like the type of player that we want at the moment. Nice little chunk of players here. Again, not really the quality that we want at the moment. In this sort of first round of picks. He's not bad. Sam Sargent. Dan Robson. Looks a little bit better. Got some decent pace. Although he doesn't really look like a, a deep line forward. And then those two players have been picked by Columbus. And by the LA Galaxy. I think we're going to go with. Uh, what's his name? Was it Clarson? Yeah. I think Clarson looks like the uh, the best pick here. He's got really good first touch, good strength, good composure, good off the ball, and really good technique. So 
I think he's going to be the one. Um, we do need a, a backup striker. Um, I don't really trust our backup striker at the moment. Uh, it's worth noting that we have actually given... Uh, what's his name? Williams, sorry. We have actually given Williams uh, an extension on his contract. I only gave it to him because it's only a 1.1k per week, uh, which is very low. Obviously, 1k is the lowest it can go in terms of MLS contracts. So, yeah, it's 1.1. He's valued at 1.5 mil. We might be able to actually offer him out to other MLS clubs. Could be a possibility in the future. Uh, but yeah, so we've drafted Florian Klaassen. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, like I said, I wanted a striker. And uh, we'll just have to see who goes next, really. Alright, so we're up for our third first round pick. Um, and I think essentially this is the last round. There might be one more for FC Cincinnati. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, let's see what we've got on offer. Um, this guy, he is French. I don't think he has nationality. Um, unfortunately, he sees no benefit in gaining nationality despite being over. So maybe if he did, it, he did come to the club, he would actually gain nationality. Now, he does actually look pretty good. 14 reflexes, 11 passing, which is important for a sweeper keeper, and then 14 handling. One-on-ones being six does scare me a little bit, although he would only be a backup goalkeeper anyway. That's a tough one. Who's interested? Just New England. Interesting. And he's pretty much the only goalkeeper that hasn't actually gone in this first round that I do have shortlisted. So that is a possibility. Uh, Steve Hume is still there. And Pinner has actually been picked. So the left back that I wanted, Minnesota picked him in the 22nd round. And Casey Stare has also gone with Columbus. They picked him after, after our last pick. So that's interesting. Maybe I met, might have made the uh, the wrong decision there. Uh, Bocanegra is still here. I would love to get him in the next round. So I think we're going to go with the goalkeeper. Patrice Berger. Berger? Berger? I mean, I love burgers, so we'll go with Berger. But I'm pretty sure, being French, it is pronounced a little bit differently. Anyway, we'll pick him. Of course, we don't need to actually sign any of these players. Um, I can essentially just walk away before I offer them contracts and they don't join the club, apart from the Generation Adidas players. So yeah, um, you know, we're not really obliged to sign any of these players except for our first pick being the Generation Adidas player. Anyway, let's skip to our next pick, which is fairly soon. It is the 31st pick pick overall and I think we are into the second round I yeah draft round two alrighty let's see who we've got left in terms of my shortlist um, probably not a lot Bocanegra is still actually there and so is Salinas but I'm not really too fussed about him Honestly, I don't really want to pick too many players because we don't really need them. We do actually have a pretty big squad at the moment anyway. Definitely don't need any more strikers. I'm, I'm really trying to get rid of a lot of players, and I think we won't register them, so they will be waived from the club anyway. Um, so I think the... F I don't know. I just don't know. Steve Hume could be a player we go for. I, I like him. I really like him. I just don't like his physical attributes. He's got 12 pace, but apart from that, he doesn't really have anything else. And, you know, that's a little bit of a worry for me.
Uh, Figueroa, I'm pretty sure I saw him before. Decided not to uh, to shortlist there. Um, I guess we will go with Bocanegra. Yeah. Just want to have one more last little look over everyone. Especially all the players that I've actually shortlisted. Yeah, I thought this guy's name was really funny. Adrian Adriano. Anyway. Let's make... I think this will be my final pick for the draft. Um, obviously, we have more picks later on, but they're kind of just useless anyway. So, with our final pick for the draft, we're going to go with Jesus Bocanegra. I'm pretty sure Bocanegra is actually... If I'm not mistaken, he is our... What do you call it? Director of football, yeah. Carlos Bocanegra. Um, a very famous American international player. Um, so, yeah. I think with our final pick, we'll go with him. Probably no relation. Um, but, yeah. We'll get him in. He might be a player I don't actually offer a contract to. Although, he does have good versatility. Which is pretty important in the MLS. Anyway. It's going to be our final pick. Um, yeah. Jesus Bocanegra. Welcome to the club. We'll pass and finish, and then we'll complete the draft, and all the players will go to their respective clubs. Alrighty, um, there's one more thing I wanted to show you, and that is a player that actually came through Chicago's academy. Daniel K, 18 years old, um, obviously started, well, essentially started the game at Chicago's Academy. Um, of course, last season being the first season. Uh, but he looks pretty amazing. Um, I've been going in with pretty low offers in terms of trying to sign him to the club or trade him. Um, but I think... I think I'm going to I'm gonna go a bit harder. I've been offering like third round draft picks and stuff like that. But I think we might actually offer some second round picks... Um, maybe a little bit of allocation fund as well. Because I don't really think... The, the draft is good, but the players are all between the ages of like 20 and like 23. Whereas this guy's 18, still got a lot of room to develop. And he looks essentially like a, a first round draft pick. Albeit probably a little bit better. Like I said, he has more potential. Anyway, just thought I'd show him before we, we end the episode. But yeah, that's going to wrap this episode up. Um, I'd love to get some feedback on the episode, guys. A super draft, you know, sort of youth academy episode. Purely focusing on that. You know, not showing any games, albeit, you know, the season is finished. Uh, we are about to start friendlies. And of course, I'm really looking forward to the, uh, the next season. It's worth noting, actually, that we do have the North American Champions League first round. Um, I'm probably not going to play that on camera because the team we're versing is Walter Ferretti, who are a team from Nicaragua. They're not the greatest team in the world. They've got a couple of good players. This guy, their striker, he's not bad, but he's also not great. And uh, a lot of the rest of the team's not, not really that great either. I'm expecting to go through, let's say that. And I think in terms of our board expectations, um, I'm pretty sure that we are actually expected to, I think, make the final of the North American Champions League. So that's going to be interesting. Um, especially, I think if we go into the second round, our, I'm not sure if it's the second round or the quarterfinals, whatever it is, we will be versing Monterey from Mexico if they do win. So that'll be interesting. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Like I said, give me some feedback down in the comment section. Drop a like on the video. It'd be much appreciated. Um, before we go, I'll just show you quickly the... Wow. Um, yeah, sorry. The I was like, where did all these trades come from? Uh, I'm assuming it came during the draft, would be my guess. Um, anyway, 
it's kind of weird. So our draft picks were Klaassen, you know, decent little deep lying forward. Pretty happy with him. Um, like I said, we needed a, another backup sort of striker to challenge Williams on the bench uh, because Martinez is way too good. Uh, we've got Patrice Berger, Berger, the Berger. You know, a decent little third choice goalkeeper there. Hopefully he'll gain that nationality. Otherwise, we might have to waive him because I think our our international allowance in the MLS is, I think, eight. You can trade for international slots. You can do it by year or permanently. I don't really want to do that because they're really, really expensive. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens with that. And then we also got Bocanegra here as well, who's not the best player in the world, but he is quite versatile. And then, of course, we also had our first round pick, uh, which was, if I can find him here, he's not going to be in there, is he? Uh, in? No. Okay. Draft allocations? No. Okay. Well, I'll go over it again in the next episode, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the draft overall. I don't think it was too bad. Again, there wasn't a lot of players that we could really capitalize on. I think we, we got a pretty good choice, especially going for left wingers, because I feel like Gonzalo Martinez might want to leave the club sooner rather than later. Um, he did have a little bit of interest in him along with, you know, certain other plays in the team from EPL clubs. So it's going to be hard to keep them all. Anyways, if you could subscribe to the channel, it'd be much appreciated, guys. Hit the notification bell. And that should hopefully keep you up to date with all these episodes in the future. Apart from that, guys, take it easy.